Hello everybody, it's Michael Harbridge. Uh, we're going to wait a couple minutes here to let everybody get into the room. Tonight we're going to be doing ceramic cookies. We're going to be rolling out clay. We're going to be showing you guys how to decorate them. We'll talk about uh, firing clay and doing all kinds of cool stuff with them. So we'll just give it a couple minutes here. I see people are getting into the room and uh, we'll, we'll wait for everybody to get in here. Hope everybody's having a uh, good preparation for the holiday season. Kind of crazy time of the year right now. We've got weird weather here in Wisconsin. We had about a foot of snow last week and now we've got really dense fog that you can't see a few feet in front of you and thunderstorms and just crazy stuff. All the snow is, is melting. So I see people are making their way into the room. Um, so um, if you guys are interested in the mystery box, make sure that you type in the words mystery box in the uh, chat. My wife Janine will be here in just a minute and she'll be watching for you to say mystery box and she'll be writing your names on a slip of paper and um, then toward the end of the live tonight we'll draw a name out and what we have is a medium flat rate shipping box. I won't tell you exactly what's in that box ahead of time um, but whoever's name is drawn out gets the opportunity to buy that box for $50. That includes shipping anywhere in the USA. And um, it's usually about $100 value, what's in that box. And what I'll tell you about that box tonight is it has a lot to do with what we're doing tonight. Um, so probably has something to do with the, the cookies and things that we're making. So um, make sure that you put mystery box in there. And Janine will be marking names down. I'm going to set that aside here and we'll get started. Um, so we record these and then I've got somebody who's editing them and turning them into videos that people can watch later. So I'm gonna kinda start over here. Um, so um, I'm just gonna kinda pause a little bit. Hello everybody, thanks for joining us. I'm Michael Harbridge and we're gonna be doing ceramic cookies this evening. We're gonna be doing rolling out clay. We're gonna show you, talk about firing and we'll talk about finishing those to make them look like real cookies. Um, but you only got to decorate them once. So we're going to get started. I'm going to flip the camera down here and we will talk about the different um, clay bodies. You can work with any type of clay. Tonight I'm working with a low fire earthenware clay. Um, I use non-fired finishes on these. So if you're looking for a project to do, um, you know, maybe over the holidays, uh, where you're going to be um, with family and things, this is a really cool and fun technique. And so the low fire white clay is kind of gray in color and you can roll slabs out using a slab roller or you can do it by hand. I've got a piece of craft foam here that um, I'm rolling the clay on. The reason I like a, the craft foam versus canvas is it gives me a smooth surface and it doesn't absorb moisture. And so you can get this craft foam um, at the craft stores. They usually come in 12 packs. There's like eight by 10 and then there's these 11 by 17 sheets. And so I really like the 11 by 17 sheets. Um, and then I've got some wood slats here. When you're rolling out cookies, it's kind of like or rolling out the, the dough or the clay. Um, it's not quite as important to get a really super even slab like you would do if you were doing a big dish or something because you're going to be cutting out little cookies from this. And so if you have areas that are a little bit thinner, a little bit thicker, it's not a real big deal. But when you're doing a big platter or a bowl or something or a slab built type pieces, you usually want the, the clay to be uniform in thickness. And so the slots of wood, this is just trim that I get from um, like a Lowe's or a, a Home Depot. Um, and I get it with two different thicknesses. So one way it's a little bit thicker. When I turn it on the other edge, it's a little bit thinner. So that way I can roll different thicknesses of slabs of clay. Because these cookies, I don't need them to be real thick. Oops, I just knocked some sprinkles on the floor. Um, I don't need it to be real real thick. I'm going to go with the thin side. Now, normally, I would put another piece of this craft foam on top of the clay so that when I roll over it, the clay doesn't want to stick to the roller. But so that you guys can see tonight a little bit better, I'm just going to roll right on that clay, and I'm going to kind of roll back and forth. And with doing the cookies, it doesn't matter... Um, really how wide your slab is 
But if you're rolling a slab and you want it to be wider, you can roll it kind of one way, and the roller isn't hitting the slats of wood yet. And if I want, I can take and turn that then and roll it the other way to get, so I've widened it this way, and now I'm going to widen it going in this direction. What I'm doing is I'm rolling until the rollers are rolling on these slats of wood, and that way I get a very even slab of clay. Now this slab is, normally when I'm hand building, this is a nice thickness. Um, I don't need my cookies to be that thick. So I'm going to just pull those slats of wood away, and I can take the roller and roll back and forth over this and thin this out a little bit more. Again, I can flip it the other way, and I can go over and I can roll it and get that slab. And you want to do this about the thickness that you would normally make cookies. Now remember, this isn't going to rise at all in firing, um, so don't count on um, that to happen. And a lot of people will just take their cookie cutters and they'll start cutting into the clay. And you can do that, but if you've done that, you've probably had sometimes the, the cookie cutter sticks to the clay or the clay sticks to the cookie cutter and you pull it out and then the clay's coming out and then it sticks to the cookie cutter and you gotta try and push that clay out. So a trick somebody showed me years ago was using just like plastic wrap and taking a piece of that and placing that <clears throat> over the top of your clay. This will prevent the clay from sticking to the cookie cutter and it will also um, give you a nice rounded edge on the clay. So if you don't use the plastic and you cut into the clay and you pull it out, you get a, usually a very squared edge on your cookie and it's usually rough and you need to really smooth that and do some work to do that. With using the plastic wrap, I'm just taking and pressing down as hard as I can into the clay with the plastic wrap over the top and what you're going to get when we take this out is nice rounded edges on those cookies. So I'm going to do just some different sizes of the hearts here. I've got an idea of a technique for Valentine's Day that I'm going to need to do a whole bunch of hearts. But you can go and do lots of cutouts in that slab, different sizes. Usually I leave a little bit of space in between them. All right, so I'm just going to do these, but I could I could continue to do more and more cookies around here on the slab, making um, lots more cookies. And then I can take and just peel that plastic wrap away. Most of the time, that plastic wrap is going to get some rips and tears in it from where you've cut, so you're usually not going to reuse that. But then I can just pull away that excess clay, just like you're working with cookie dough, and look at on our cookies, we've got pretty smooth edges that we don't need to do a lot of cleaning or smoothing before we fire these. And so they've all got nice little edges. Now, something else that you can do with the cookie cutouts is, and these hearts are a, a perfect way of doing it. I'm putting another or a part of the plastic wrap on there that I didn't um, use yet, and I'm going to take a smaller heart and go right in the middle of this big heart, press it in, lift it out, pull my plastic wrap away, and now I've got a cookie that's got the middle cut out or can be used as an ornament, and I've got another small little heart in the middle, so you really don't have any waste with those. Now, if you want to make them ornaments, there are um, different ways you can do it. You can poke a hole in just using something like a needle tool or a toothpick, or you can use things like nichrome wire or high temp wire. And there's different gauges to the wire. This 24 gauge is a little bit thinner than this one that happens to be, I think this is 16, 17 gauge. And, and it's kind of weird. Wiring has what's called a gauge thickness. And so you would think the lower the number, the thinner the gauge, and it's just the opposite. The, the lower the number, the thicker the gauge. So the 17 gauge is really, I think, too thick for ornament hooks. And so I like the 24 gauge. And what you can do with this 
is you can make hooks. And some people will buy, and there are companies that sell U hooks. They're just shaped in a, a U shape. And those are okay, but I'm going to show you a little trick because sometimes those little U hooks can pull out. And I'll, I'll show you an example here of a U hook and then the type of hook that I like to put in. And so you would generally just take and snip off a little piece of wire. And to make a, a U hook, you can just take and wrap it around a brush handle. You can wrap it around a pencil or a pen. And so a U hook will look, if you buy them in a, a package, they will look something like this, where they're just a U shape. What I like to do with them is to take and wrap that around the brush handle. And I'm going to cut out one that's a little bit longer. I can go on a smaller brush handle here and do this. I can take and wrap this around the brush handle and then twist this. And I am going to make a little bit bigger, a bigger one because this is a little too short for that. A little longer with the wire. So if I take that and wrap it around this brush handle and then I twist this so it overlaps, I give it a couple twists and I end up with a, I'm going to put it on the white paper here, it should show up better. I end up with kind of like a, a ribbon where I've got two tails coming down. And I leave those tails sticking out so that when I take and press those into the clay and I stick that in and I kind of pinch that clay down around there, you end up with a lot stronger hook than just that U-hook going in there because when it's fired, sometimes that U-hook can just pull straight out. With this one, we've got the coil or the little tails. There's one going this way and there's one going this way. So they're going out and so it's less likely that that hook will pull out. And all you have to do is just kind of pinch the top. Sometimes people will put a little slip in there. I usually don't. I just pinch it to make sure that that clay is tight around that hook. And after that's fired, you're going to have a really hard time getting that hook pulled out of there. The high temp wire is designed to be fired um, and it can hold up to those temperatures. Um, you may find some other types of wire that might work, um, but I really like to work with the, the night chrome wire, the high temperature wire. Now, when you want to dry these pieces, <clears throat> um, usually I place them on like a, a piece of drywall is a good way to do it. Um, doing it on a project board like this. It's a, a special material that some like bats are made with and a lot of clay forms and things are made with this type of board. Um, and I'll usually keep an eye on it. You want to watch ornaments to make sure that you don't dry them too fast. So if I blow a fan on this, the larger pieces may want to kind of curl up on the sides because it's going to dry on the edges a lot of times quicker and it'll start to curl up. Um, if you see that happening, then just take another board and place it over the top to prevent that from happening. Or you can take and kind of flip them over, flatten them the other way as they start to firm up on there. Um, if you take and put these on top of the kiln and try to dry them really fast, a lot of times you'll get the edges will curl up on there. Um, you can do this if you don't have boards or drywall. Do it on multiple layers of newspaper and just flip the ornaments um, and make sure that they um, <clears throat> are on kind of a, something that will absorb moisture. If you put these on a plastic surface or from like a countertop or a plastic tabletop, they won't absorb moisture on the backside. They'll dry on the top. Sometimes you'll get cracking um, and you'll a lot of times get warping on those pieces as well. So um, I see Janine still writing names over there. We're going to go just a couple more minutes with the mystery box. If you haven't gotten your name in for the mystery box, we usually cut that off about 15 minutes into the live. And we started a couple minutes late here, so we'll let it go for Someone was asking a couple minutes. Someone what a mystery box is. Oh, if somebody came in late for a mystery box, mystery box is a medium flat rate shipping box. And um, it's full of about $100 worth of goodies. And the person whose name is drawn toward the end of the live tonight, you need to be present to be able to get in on that. Um, that person can purchase it for $50, and that includes shipping anywhere in the U.S. If you are international, you can put your name in, but we would actually get the shipping total together 
and let you know what that is, and you would need to pay the additional shipping charges on that. All right, let me get all this stuff out of the way here. <clears throat> all right, so once you've got your cookies are dry <clears throat> and they're ready to be fired. Um, <clears throat> oh, I just saw someone a while oh. back commented the audio was kind of bad, and then someone else agreed. <clears throat> I don't know if that's the case with everybody, so they might. If there are anybody else having issues with the audio, then just a couple people that not really something we can. <laughs> yeah, if um, if you're having trouble with the audio, you know, try adjusting your speaker sound. I'm not sure. We if do it's, have bad weather and stuff. Here. Yeah, we do have the. I just got home and we've got really bad weather, and they're saying like 60 mile an hour winds and things tonight. So we've had thunder and lightning and all kinds of crazy stuff. So when you go to fire these ornaments, <clears throat> a lot of times people will stack them and it's okay with these they're not something that you're going to be eating off of um, like i said we're going to be working with non-fired colors on these and so if you stack a bunch of them together to fire them it's okay um, i always worry about firing pieces where there's a lot of them stacked that the pieces in the middle may not get enough heat treatment in firing um, but with these even if they're a little bit under fired it's not the end of the world. I'm working with low fire clay, so these are fired to 04. You want to make sure that they are completely dry before you fire them. If you haven't worked with, with moist clay, um, clay, if there's still moisture in the clay and it's damp, when you fire it, when you get up to over 200 and some degrees or hotter, um, that moisture kind of turns into a gas in there and it usually will pop and, and what a lot of people refer to as blowing up in the kiln. And so you want to make sure that they're good and dry. Um, usually letting them dry for about a week is good. Um, again, avoid fans and things on them. Once they're to the almost dry stage but you're not quite sure if they're dry enough, it doesn't hurt to place them on top of a hot kiln or do a soak at the beginning of your firing to make sure that the pieces are dry. It looks like Janine's done done writing, so she's got everybody's names in so far that have said mystery box. I don't know if, and, um, okay, there are, it says there's vibrating, um, turned down, I don't know if turning down your volume is There's an echo, it's gargly, it's muffled, <laughs> audio buzz. I don't know. It um, seems like there are a lot of people having some. Okay, I'm just looking at the the settings here, and the vibration oh. could be the fan that's going, and it's picking that up. It sounds better when you don't talk as loud. <laughs> oh, really? So I should talk a little softer? <laughs> should I put on my seductive voice? <clears throat> Maybe I'm a little bit too close to the microphone. I'll sit back here a little bit and see if that, that helps. I know the I just turned the volume down on my end. We'll see if that makes a difference. Um, I know I checked the, the microphone. It is the right microphone because oh. one time we had the wrong microphone. Like you said, my voice is great. So. Oh, you're okay. I'll so I, I may be a little bit too live because too, I know what I'm talking about. Too close. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll talk a little bit softer. I usually talk loud because that usually is good. So okay. So when you fire these, um, make sure they're dry. Make sure that if you stack them, that they are dry because if you stack them and the one that's in the middle is damp, even if you do a soaking on that firing at the beginning, um, those ornaments that are in the middle aren't going to get as hot and as dry. That moisture is going to kind of be trapped. That's like putting you know, a piece of clay that's that thick in the kiln. So make sure that they're dry before you fire them. Um, and usually as far as how high, how high can you stack them, usually you know, 6 to 10 maybe. If you start getting too many of them stacked up, you risk breaking the ones on the bottom. Um, and, and if you use the plastic wrap, you honestly should have very little cleaning on these. And usually what I do is once they're, they're dry or even while they're damp, is I just take a damp sponge and I just kind of run around the edges before I put them in the kiln to take off any little sharp edges that, that happen to be on there. But honestly, um, you know, a little bit of 
roughness kind of makes them look like real cookies. So you, they don't have to be perfect. And sometimes you'll get things like the star. Sometimes the points aren't perfectly straight on there. But real cookies usually don't, you know, they're not perfect anyway. Much better. So, all right. Uh -huh. So we've got them fired. And now we need to decide on colors and how how cooked are your cookies. And so there's lots of different, you know, tan colors and, you know, Mako makes their, their softy acrylics. Duncan has their OS line of acrylics. Um, I'm going to be working with, with Mako tonight. And so things like medium portrait is a good color or if you want them to be a little bit more cooked, um, a color like light taupe is a good base color as well. And then we're going to kind of darken the edges by sponging, and we might use a little bit of the, the medium taupe, or we might take a little bit of chocolate fudge or a darker brown to kind of give them a little bit more of a baked look on the edges. So the first thing, whoops, the first thing we're going to do is start out base coating these <coughs> front and back with whichever color you decide for your your cookie. I'm going to use the, the light taupe. <clears throat> I'm just going to squeeze a little bit out on tile here. Now, what type of brush works best? A stiff bristled brush is going to work best for your base coating. This is a, a hog bristle brush. It's one of the um, <clears throat> dry brushes, and they come in rounds and flats. It doesn't really matter. I like flats when I'm doing my base coating. Um, and it's best to dampen the brush when you're going to do your base coating. I had dampened this before I got started. But to do that, just dip it into water, kind of work that moisture into your hand. And what that does is it, t it dampens the bristle in the middle. Because when you're working with acrylic colors and you load up this brush with this acrylic and you start painting with it, the paint is coming off of the top of the brush. What's happening to all that paint that's in the middle of the bristles? It's just sitting there. It's not um, working its way out. So if those bristles are dry, your paint is going to start drying in the middle of the brush. And when you wash it out, the paint will come, most of the paint will come out, but that paint that's in the middle sometimes gets a little stubborn, gets hard to wash out of there, and then it starts to dry and build up. And I'm sure some of you or many of you have brushes where a round brush doesn't hold a nice point or a, a flat brush like this kind of flares out because you get that buildup of paint in the middle that um, kind of gets caked up in there. So by dampening those bristles before you start painting, it softens that, um, or it, it prevents that paint from drying in like it will do if the bristles are real dry. This one's a brand new brush. I just had a couple loose bristles coming out on here. So I'm just kind of painting the top side on these. And then I'm going to go back and do the back side on them as well. And the acrylics dry really fast. So this goes pretty quick. A couple of people who burn their cookies the thought maybe java bean would be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you'll see when we when we sponge on the, the colors on the, the edges here to kind of cook them. Um, you can go a little darker if you want some that are a little mm -hmm. bit more burned. A little bit more color out here. And I'm not going to do all of these cookies. We're just going to do a few of them. So I'm going to set these aside here. And we will get the back side of these painted as well. This one here, I had actually done some texture on. I couldn't find any smooth um, heart ornaments, all of them that I had. And this one, I had pressed like a doily into it. So I'm just going to leave that side. Normally, I would do like dry brushing on those cookies. So I'm just going to kind of leave this one. I'm not going to worry about painting the back side. We'll just get the edges here with the, the color. We'll get this one painted. 
And anytime you're working with acrylics, you want to make sure that you really wash these brushes out well when you're done with them. Don't leave the brushes sitting out with wet color in them in between. Um, always wash them out unless, of course, if you're doing dry brushing, you won't be wetting those brushes. But um, I see a lot of times people will be like, oh, well, while I'm waiting for the top side to dry, I'll just leave the brush sitting out. And um, it's always best, to, better to put it in water than to um, leave it sitting out and let that paint dry up. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of the medium taupe and the chocolate fudge, and I'm going to have a little bit of um, the lighter taupe color out on the tile. Put a little bit of each of these. And this is where you can decide how, how burnt or cooked you want your cookie. Um, my sponge, I'm just going to get it damp, and I'm going to squeeze as much of that moisture out of the sponge as I can. I don't want a lot of moisture in there, but that too is kind of like um, the brush. If you dampen that, and I'm just going to take a paper towel to get some of that excess water out, um, the paint won't dry into the sponge as easily. And I'm going to take and just kind of pinch the sponge, get a little bit more of the light taupe in here, and um, I'm going to load up the sponge with that, that light taupe. I'm going to kind of pat that out, and then I'm going to dip into my darker color, get a little bit of that in, and kind of pat that out, and then go around the edges of my cookie. And the top of this, we're going to do a lot of um, frosting on here, so it doesn't really matter if you do the sponging on the top. Now, if this isn't cooked enough looking on the edge, you can take, and without washing that sponge out, pick up just a little bit of that darker brown, and I'm going to kind of blot that in the middle, and I can go and I can gently tap that around the edge to get a little bit more of a cooked cookie. And then I'm going to set these aside to dry. I think that's about a good amount of cooked look on here. When I reload, I'll pick up a little bit of the medium color, a little bit of the darker color, and just sponge around these edges. If you get it too dark, just go back into the light and just blot it out. Always kind of go back to your, your spot where you're going to kind of blot this. In this one, we're going to go a little bit more a little bit more cooked on the edge to show you one that's a little bit darker. And we'll do the heart here quick. So I'm going to purposely like get this one real dark up in here. And if I don't like that, I'm just going to go back to the light color, dab a little bit of it, blot it, and go right over the top to kind of tone that down so it's not so dark. So don't worry if you've got, you know, somebody helping that isn't a painter, doesn't paint ceramics a lot, you really, you, I don't want to say you can't mess it up, but you really can fix it if they do get a little bit too dark. Now, oh, question. Could you use stroke and coats to do this and then just frost them after firing? You could. The thing with using stroke and coat is um, you have to fire these a second time, and so you've got, you know, firing these, and to me, stilting these ornaments is kind of a pain. Um, it's a lot more work. You've got that extra step. You've got to worry about either stilt marks or if you've got look, hooks and loops on them, hanging them from some type of a rod um, when they're fired. And they're also going to come out a lot shinier. And so I don't know that they're going to look really realistic, um, but you could. If you wanted to do that, you absolutely could. And then use um, different products for your frosting. So Duncan has a no fire snow and Mako has a no fire snow. They're both made now by Mako and they're very um, similar and they have kind of a, a texture. Um, I want to say it's like there's almost like there's sand inside here. Um, and you can see that this is kind of bumpy looking. Um, the Duncan is basically the same. It's got kind of a bumpy texture 
to it as well. And this will work for frosting, um, but it will have that bumpier texture. And so I recently found this modeling paste, which of course I sell on my website, learnfiredarts.com. And this modeling paste <coughs> is smooth. And so this really is like frosting. It's nice and creamy. It works well for repairing bisqueware. If you're going to be working with acrylics, if you get a crack in a piece, if you want to build up dimension, um, this product works great. And so if you want white frosting, you can just take any one of these and use them right out of the bottle to create white frosting, which we're going to do here on the candy cane. Now you can see that the snow is a little bit whiter than the modeling paste. So if you want to tint these and color them and you want the modeling paste to be whiter, just add white acrylic to that. Or if you want it to be, you know, pink or blue or green, you can add acrylics to any of these to make them a different color of frosting. So I'm going to take the No Fire Snow and I'm just using a palette knife, but if you don't have a palette knife, a popsicle stick will work. Um, you probably could use a brush to dab it on as well, but I'm going to take that palette knife, or you could use a butter knife, or um, a, a, what's the thing called that you use for frosting, that knife that you actually use for frosting? Like a spatula. Yeah, kind of like a spatula, mini spatula. Mini well, spatula. Um, just real quick back to, there's a couple questions before you got decorating. But okay. Do you have any finished cookies with this technique fired? I don't do this in a fire technique because, like I said, I don't like having to stilt these and mess with, with these. Okay. And then how do you get the hook of the candy cane baked? Like, did you use a smaller piece of a sponge to get, I think she means to get inside that little... Inside that? No, I used that same sponge and I just kind of pinched it okay. and, and dabbed that around the edge. But you could use like a sponge dabber if you have those sponges on a stick. Those would work too. And do you know when the modeling piece will be back in? Yep, we'll have the modeling piece should be back in stock next week. So, All right, so I've got the white frosting on my cookie. And then what about sprinkles? So you can use real sprinkles, and I've got some real sprinkles here that we'll use on other things, but some of you may also do work with glass in your kilns. Are those from my kitchen? <clears throat> yeah, Janine just realized I've got all her sprinkles from the kitchen. <laughs> I was waiting for her to say something about the cookie cutters, too. <clears throat> <laughs> <clears throat> I just took the heart ones. I didn't take all the other, the other good ones. Um, so glass frit that's used for glass fusing is great sugar sprinkles on these pieces. So while that frosting or no fired snow is wet, I'm going to take and I'm going to sprinkle some of this glass frit right into that white snow while it's wet. Don't wait for it to get too dry. And you can sprinkle on as much as you want. I would normally have a piece of paper or something underneath here that um, would catch the excess glass and I would pour that back in. But I basically got, and if I tip this, I might get a few pieces of that glass that don't stick. But while that snow is wet, it's really easy to put that glass fruit in there and it looks just like colored sugar. The reason I don't like to use the actual colored sugar is, I'm just looking, we've got some here. These containers have, these are what Janine's worried about that I've got here. These sugars, a lot of times when they get sprinkled into that wet snow, the coloring that's on that can kind of bleed out and kind of look a little funky on there. So I find that the glass frit, and this glass frit, there's different, if you're not familiar with, with glass fusing, um, they'll have different colors and they'll have different COEs, the coefficient of expansion of glass. And so I work with the, the system 96, which is the 96 COE, and there's different numbers. For this technique, it doesn't matter what COE of glass you work with. When you're fusing and melting glass together, it's important that you have that same COE to match. Otherwise, pieces, um, they may fuse together, and at some point, they will split and crack. But for this technique, it doesn't matter. So if you go to look for glass, it doesn't matter because you're not firing this. You don't have to worry about it. So going back to you know people asking about doing these with fired colors, 
if you did it with fired color and you sprinkled this into, because there's actually, Mako makes a product called Sculpting Paste that um, can be used, could be used as frosting. But if you sprinkled that glass into it and fired that sculpting paste on and the glass, the glass melts at a cooler temperature. So your glass is going to completely flatten and it can flow if it's on a vertical piece. On a flat piece like this, it's just going to flatten and it's not going to look dimensional. So again, I like the non-fired technique with this better than the fired technique. And I think that this cookie looks a lot more like a real baked cookie with that matte finish rather than a real glossy finish. Were you just talking about firing the model on paste? I was talking about firing. Mako makes a oh, product called Sculpting Paste. Someone asked that's if a, you can fire that. Yeah, so the, the, this modeling paste and the No Fire Snow by Duncan or Mako fire. do not get fired, hence the No Fire. But yeah, so don't get confused. So there's this modeling paste, which is non-fired, there is sculpting paste, which is a fired product. Um, and then I know Paula McCoy has, and I don't know if Paula's in here tonight or not, um, she has a product too that um, is dimensional. Um, she has one that is like a, a sand base, um, which would give you a real textured looking snow, more like the no fire snow. And then she has kind of a creamier one that you've maybe seen her using on her ornaments. And it, it's a product that can be used non-fired and that can also be fired. So that probably would work for frosting as well. And the glass frit comes in all different colors. Do you sell that? The, the modeling paste? No, the glass frit. So I do not the sell glass the glass frit. Um, and I thought about that before the live tonight. I'm like, you know, people are probably going to ask about that. And, and you can order glass from companies like Delphi, um, Slumpies. Valeria um, Atchison has a whole bunch. Maybe she'll sell it. Okay, and, and, and she may also have, I was going to mention, for those of you who have been around for a while, there you used to use crushed glass in the windows of village buildings and churches and things, oh. and you'd put masking tape behind it, you'd sprinkle that glass into on top of that tape in the window, and then you'd pour this really fluid glue over the top, and when the glue dry, you'd peel the tape away from the inside, and you'd have these glass windows in your village buildings and churches. So some of you may have, and, and I've been to her studio, and I know she's got a lot of unique items there. <laughs> you might have some of that, that crushed glass um, that is, is from the old windows and stuff on village buildings. Good. But there's a lot of companies that sell glass for it. Even like in the ceramic industry, Glazer, some of you order from Glazer, they sell glass for it in, in a variety of colors. Does the glass, do the, do the glass bits have sharp edges? You know, it, it, I can take this and I can, let me grab a few of these, I can, you know, press it into my hand and I'm not, when I'm rolling this in there, I'm not cutting my finger. It, it has edges to it. It's rough, maybe. but it's not real sharp. I mean, I probably wouldn't want to sprinkle it on the floor and walk across it with, with bare feet, but it's not like you have to worry that you're going to poke holes in your fingers just pinching it and sprinkling it on the pieces. Um, you know, if somebody tries to eat that, <laughs> they're going to have other dental issues um, with that trying to bite into that cookie. So... Um, and the glass will be embedded into the snow pretty well. And there's a couple questions about the modeling paste. First of all, does it dry hard? It does dry hard, yes. Okay, and is it water-based so it can be thinned <clears throat> slightly to get drips? Yes, and it, it actually does work really well for doing drips. And let me grab my palette knife because I like it for doing like snow on the edges of pieces. Um, so while you're showing that, can you tell us what cone Mako Sculpting Medium fires to? Mako Sculpting Medium is a low fire product. And that's a good question. I've never high fired it. Um, most of the products will work to higher temperatures. And I, I actually, we just shipped an order out today that took my last bottle of, of Sculpting Medium. But you know what? There's probably one on my shelf right around the corner mm -hmm. there. Can you go and look and see if that... Janine will check what and see. It's called Sculpting Medium. Okay. It's Sorry, got a, there's a lot of it's a, a four ounce bottle, um, and it'll say Sculpting Medium in it. So it's and Paula has something that can be used too. Yep. No fire piping paste. Yes, for piping paste. Yep. Okay. So this is the the 
the non-fired modeling paste. And so if I take this and I put it on the edge of something, I can take the palette knife and I can kind of drag down to get drips. Or if I go onto the edge of this cookie and I take and I pull down, see, I've got drips coming down here as well just by pressing it and then pulling it away you can get like icicles and things so on trees and village buildings and stuff I really like this product for doing that as well. Do you find it? Where is it? It's like a four ounce bottle and it's probably down in about waist height on that shelf there. The first shelf? Yeah. Um, it have a white label with kind of a... Oh! I found oh it. She found it. Oh. See I even knew where it was. <laughs> the description uh, did help. <laughs> so this is Mako's Sculpting Medium and Cone 6 results turns glossy. So it turns glossier in a Cone 6 firing. <clears throat> um, about, do you think spackle would work? <laughs> you know, a spackle, um, it doesn't dry real hard. Um, mm -hmm. it, it would work, but I don't think it's going to dry as hard and it'll tend to be chalkier and might chip away. Um, and if people actually handle the cookies and they bang together, I think spackle, just like on a wall, if it gets bumped or bumped hard, it can break away. No one should be touching them. Well, but they will. <laughs> and it, you know, years ago um, when I was working, I was working for Jones Publishing and I did this technique and it was for an article in the magazine and I put these cookies on a plate <clears throat> on the desk in my office and people there would always like if, if you had food in the break room in the refrigerator you had to guard it with your life because sometimes people would just go and eat other people's food and so I put these cookies they were on a plate on my desk and we were waiting to photograph them for one of the issues of the magazine and people would come into my office and they're like ooh cookies and they'd pick it up and I would be like yeah I didn't first of all tell you you could eat one of those and second if you take a bite out of it you're going to need new teeth because and I'm like don't just go pick yourself up and eating it so warn people that the, the cookies aren't real so nobody takes a bite out of them so I took some of the sculpting medium and I just put it into a little cup here and I'm going to add some red acrylic and this happens to be the antique red because the the snow and all these mediums are white when you mix these colors with them, they're going to obviously lighten. So I'm going to get more of a deeper pink color, just like making frosting with food coloring. You're going to get a lighter color. So if you want pink, don't add pink necessarily to your frosting. Add red. Or if you want a lighter blue, add a darker blue because the, the white is always going to lighten those colors and I can use this and frost my little heart just like I'm frosting a real cookie and you don't necessarily want this I mean and you might you might want this to be perfectly smooth um, I like it to look like it's a little bit textured and then I can take some of Janine's real sprinkles here and I can use them. So the ones that I look for, that I find don't tend to bleed out, I explained that that sugar, just the colored sugar that's in these, a lot of times when that hits, it, it the color might bleed out of a little bit. But things like the little pellet type things, the sprinkles, the little shapes, most of those work really well. This one has little pearls. I think we might use some of these on the, mm -hmm. the heart. These will be perfect for that. Um, and those usually, ooh, that purple will look really cool on there. We even, I don't even think we've used these. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, I don't think these are even open. So I can take, again, while that is wet, and I can take and sprinkle. Can you use bisque stain to color the modeling paste and will it still dry hard? Yeah, so that's what I, I just used some of the, the Mako Softy um, Duncan's bisque stains. Their OS's are basically acrylic color, and that we're using to, to tint the, the frosting on these. Now, when I do things like this where they're, they're bigger 
pellets and things, I may just go back and kind of make sure that these are pressed in to the frosting well. And I can go back and I can add whatever color do we want to put in here. Maybe do some of the do some of the blue in here, so that'll show up well. And I can kind of go back again, kind of tap them to make sure that they're embedded into the snow well. Now, these I just have holes in them for hanging. And so after I've frosted them, I want to go back and I usually go to the back side and kind of poke through to make sure that my frosting isn't plugging up the hole on there. Or I could use a toothpick to do that. And that's where if you're doing them for ornaments, those wire hooks are kind of nice to have inside. So you don't have to worry about those holes. If you want something to look like it's just got crystals of sugar on it, there's clear for it as well that you could sprinkle onto the pieces to do that. If um, I did a, <clears throat> a workshop where we did cookies a while back, and I just tinted the entire bottle of No Fire Snow, and so these I happen to use green um, to tint the snow. And so to get this lighter green, I used a darker, brighter green, like bright green, to get this more pastel green. If I wanted this to be a deeper green, I would pick something that's either darker or put more of this in there. Now, if you get to the point where you've got more acrylic paint in there, then you do sculpting paste or, or snow, um, the, the snow might kind of, as it dries, kind of shrink and get some cracks in it. So be careful that you don't mix so much acrylic in there that um, you have more acrylic than you do either the, the modeling paste or the no fire snow. And so this I've had for a while and I just save it in this jar and I can go back and frost cookies with it anytime. Mm -hmm. Someone was wondering if the candy sprinkles will run. I think they must have. You said that at one point, right, that they might run a little bit. No, I know. I'll, I'll use some sprinkles on here. I think the sprinkles usually do. The it's the sugar that, the sugar that usually kind of bleeds out, depending on how uh, wet, in how much acrylic you put in and how wet that snow gets on the piece. So we'll put some... Um, I've got these multicolor, you know, it's kind of Halloween-y on a star, that's kind of weird. Let me see what other ones we've got here that might be sprinkles. Um, we'll do some of the pink ones on here. So this one has sprinkles, and, that, and that's actually, there's sprinkles on this one here, and they're not bleeding out. Let me put something on here that shows up better, though. You know what, we'll do the, we'll do the multicolor mm -hmm. on there. Someone was wondering if you can help make real Christmas cookies. He did not make them this year, but he does no. like to help decorate them. You know, it's always fun, like the first dozen cookies that you decorate, and you like go all out, and you're like positioning <laughs> sprinkles and, you know, making eyeballs on stuff. And when you get to about the 50th cookie, you're like, oh, for the love of God, I'm just going to put some frosting on here and sprinkle something on, and I don't care, mm -hmm. you know, at that point what it looks like, so... And then there's always the ones along the way that, um, you know, crack and break and you have to eat those. So that's usually the best part. But I can go back. And again, with the sprinkles, I'm going to just kind of take and press them down to make sure that they are wedged into my frosting, which is snow on this piece. And, you know, at this point, you let them dry and they're done. And you put them on a plate and people think that they're real cookies. <clears throat> now, the other thing that you can do while Janine's looking for other questions there is if you're good with piping with frosting, you can take that modeling paper that works really well to take and, and tint that, put it in a bag, and use your piping. And if you look closely at the picture of the cookies that I had for the promotion of this, a lot of those cookies have the piping to do that on there. And that's fun, too. If you like using those tips and, and that, too, when we start out decorating real cookies every year, you know, we're using the piping bags and we're doing all these fancy designs and little garlands on the tree and, and stuff.
and eventually, you know, we just kind of are like, okay, just get some frosting on there. So that is, is an option, too, if you're good with the, the piping to be able to do that on the pieces. And someone was wondering would attack, attract roaches sitting out on a plate. I suppose that is the concern with real sugar if you live in an area <coughs> where our sugar ants, we, I mean, here we don't really have any bugs this time of year, so I guess. Well, and, and so it, it, it could, but we're also, the, the last thing that I was going to talk about with these is sealing them. Oh, okay. And so um, I like the matte finish that looks duller. Some people want them to be glossier, and that's fine. But there are brush-on sealers and there are spray sealers. And so there is, Duncan and Mako have gloss brush-on sealers. They also have matte brush-on sealers. And so you can brush a coat of that on there that will help seal it. <clears throat> and that will help, too, with holding the sprinkles and things in place, and it will coat those. <clears throat> you can also do spray sealers. So there's Duncan spray sealer. There's gloss if you want shiny. There's matte if you want just a little bit of a shine. And then there is, we finally got satin in the back. The satin finish doesn't add any shine at all. It just seals the piece. And so I would probably prefer the satin, maybe the matte on the cookies or the matte brush on. But if you want that glossy finish, you can use a gloss sealer on there too. And that will help seal those sprinkles and things because those sprinkles <clears throat> like these, they're, they're basically like little frosting turds. And so if I take and I squish that, I can, you know, I can turn that into a little pile of sugar. So by sealing those, it will help. That's one of the reasons I really like the sugar using the, the glass frit. Um, things like the little pearls are great because they're hard. A lot of these little frosting discs and shapes, there's little pumpkins, there's little ghosts, there's all different shapes. Those usually are more like a fondant kind of material that they're a little bit more durable. Um, where those little, you know, the, the, the sprinkle, the, are those called sprinkles? Is that the little frosting? Like or jimmies? Yeah, jimmies. I was like, I know there's a name for them, but yeah, sprinkles or jimmies. Um, those tend to be a little bit softer, um, so you definitely want to put a seal on there. Um, but you don't have to if you, if you don't want to seal them. It's not that big of a deal. But yeah, if you're worried about bugs and things with the, the sweet, sugary stuff on there, um, and the other day, who was I? I was talking to, oh, I was talking to Amy, if Amy is in here. And she was showing me, she found online, there was a company that sells, they're called clay sprinkles, I think it was. Oh. And it was, and the picture was like a close-up of, and it was all different shapes, and they were ceramic. They were like sprinkles, but they were ceramic. And the picture was close-up, and it looked like you got this big bottle of them for... I don't remember how much it was. It was probably under ten dollars for a little bottle for a bottle of them. And then she looked at the size of it, and I think it said it was like a four gram bottle of the sprinkles. And I was like, okay, that is a really tiny. the The pictures were really deceiving as far as how much you got. It looked like you got a lot, but that is an option too. Um, look online, and you can find ceramic sprinkles um, as an, an option mm -hmm. as well. Oh, is Mako going to have a satin finish? Yes, okay. that is that is finally <laughs> available. We just got it in. Um, I haven't gotten the satin in the mat. We just finally got in. I haven't got those up on the website yet, but I'll try to get those up yet tonight. We do have those in stock. And the gloss we've had for a while. And is that like the old porcelain sealer? Yep, that is like the old porcelain sealer. So it doesn't give any shine. Works good in between layers of chalking and oil translucents, things like that. And then will the spray-on sealers bring up or brighten the colors on the cookies? Um, I don't, it's not really going to change the color. I mean, if you use the gloss, it's going to make it shinier. But, yeah, it's really not going to change the color on there at all. If I wanted this green to be deeper, I would either start it out with a darker green or put more of the green in there, just like you do with regular frosting. You know, it's, and... You probably, you know what, you could probably use food coloring in those pastes as well. Like, you can buy the inexpensive food coloring that's real fluid, and then you can buy the paste-type food coloring, which is more expensive, but it's very potent and doesn't use as much. But 
I like to just use the acrylic colors because I've got those, and Jean won't get mad at me when I'm taking all of her her pastes and stuff, too. Does the sealant need to be a Mako product, or can it be something like Krylon? Um, Krylon, I know that a lot of people have used that. Um, I, there are some sealers out there that will yellow over time. I don't know about the Krylon if that happens. The ceramic sealers... Um, have been around for a long, long time, and I know that they um, hold up very well. So if you use something that's not made for ceramics, there's a possibility that, you know, down the road there could be some issues. But I know that a lot of people have used that as a sealer. Okay. Then. Someone said to perhaps crushing pieces of pottery that broke in firing and using the small pieces to decorate his sprinkles. Yeah, you could, yeah. Um, and then one other question, whatever is it? Uh, oh, how long does the frosting take to dry? Did that's a good question. Um, it can take several hours to dry, depending how thick you put it on, um, but it, it can take a while to dry. So you want to leave it sit out, kind of like, you know, real cookies, depending on the, the frosting that you use. Some of them you got to leave them sit overnight, and I would kind of say do the same thing with these before you handle them or pack them and give them to somebody. Oh, and then one more question. Can you frost with paste and then paint with acrylic when they're dry to get a more vibrant color? You could, yeah, that's that's an option too. You could do that. You could paint over the top of them after the snow dries with acrylic. Yeah, definitely. Anything else? All right. Let's see if there's any other other questions. I'm going to kind of get my paint. And One person has said she lost her internet, and she's resetting now. So if we pick the mystery box, okay, just wait for her. So <laughs> her name. I see your name. <laughs> you know, we did have the, the last live. We did have um, somebody whose name was drawn, and it's weird sometimes how stuff shows up. Because, and, and the only thing that I can figure, because this person contacted me after, and she said, I was there, I responded, you know, that I was there, and it didn't show up for us, but when I went back and looked at all the comments after the live was over, her comments were there, and, and I could see the order that they came in, and so I ended up the last time I did do two mystery boxes, I got her a mystery box as well, because she did respond, but it didn't show up on our end, and I don't know, sometimes if it's like, the if somebody has a little bit slower internet at their home, that maybe it's showing up immediately for them, and for some reason it doesn't for us, so... Um, you know, you do need to be present, and if, if we ever run into that again, where I see the person did respond, it's very rare that that has happened, um, we'll, we'll take care of it, so. All right, any other questions? All right, so I've got the mystery box, and we got the... Oh, glitter. Glitter's a good idea. I suppose that would work. Yeah, glitter would be, yep. Yeah. Maybe what look as much like a real. And you know, there's probably I should go walk through a Michaels or a Hobby Lobby, and you know, I love to just walk through there and look at all the different stuff that they've got, and there may be other things in there that um, could work for sprinkles as well. Let me get these all mixed up. You guys might actually see your name in there. All right, we're drawing out a name here, and we have Michelle Bell. Is Michelle in here? So, Michelle, if you are in here, just comment in there that you're here. I'm going to open the mystery box. Now, if Michelle isn't here or Michelle decides she doesn't like what's in the mystery box and she doesn't want it, I'm going to keep these on the side here, and we will draw out another name. Uh, all right, so... Janine's going to watch for Michelle to, to comment that she's here while I open the mystery box. And there's one thing I'm going to put this here because this is going to come in the mystery box. I just didn't have any to put in here because I'm out of it. So the, one, the first thing that you're going to get is a bottle of the non-fired modeling paste will be in the mystery box. So I'll, I'll have that in next week and we will ship the mystery box. Also in this box, you're going to get a bottle of the Mako No Fire Snow. She's here. All right. So as you're as you're seeing this, Michelle, you can comment at any time if you like what you see in the box that you want the box. Um, you're also going to get a bottle of the Duncan No Fire Snow. You're going to get a variety of acrylics. You're going to get 
the two lighter colors for the, the cookies, you're going to get the darker chocolate, you're going to get the bright green, you're going to get the red. You're also going to get, set these down here, you're going to get the matte and the gloss brush on sealer. Those are non-fired sealers. You're also going to get one of the big, nice, firm brushes that I used there, one of the, the fog bristle brushes. And you're going to get this lovely set of mermaid brushes. These are cool metallic handle brushes. They've got a texture like a, a mermaid. Um, good quality, soft synthetic bristles. Mm -hmm. So you got a good variety of rounds and flats and even a, an angular and a nice um, short liner in there. You're going to get a stilt stone. So this is a, a new item. Some of these are new items that you're going to be seeing showing up on our website. Um, Kemper makes a stilt stone. So if you do glazes and you stilt pieces, this is used to scrape away um, the stilt marks. If you get a chip in a piece and you need to sand it, this is a real rough stilt stone that will work um, to smooth out things like that. We've had a lot of popularity with the rubber leaf forms and um, we have been, our manufacturer has been behind on making these leaves and these are some new shapes that we're going to be adding to the website. We're holding off on adding these to the website right now. I think a lot of you probably got my email or saw my post. Um, the owner of Colorific Porcelain that makes the formal leaves, um, it's a, a family run company. It's a mother, father and daughter that run the company and the father has had some health issues recently and he did just pass away this past weekend and there's still the, the the daughter and the mother and there's some other relatives now helping as well um, they're still trying to get caught up um, because they've had a lot to deal with and so we're not going to put these on the website quite yet we do have some of these in stock but i don't want to start overwhelming her with hundreds of orders for these but we are going to be adding these violet leaves we're going to be adding these morning glory leaves which are kind of a cool heart shape and I've got an idea for a valentine project that might use some of these and then we've got these new Japanese morning glory which are kind of larger leaves there's a set of three of those so you're going to get Michelle if you if you choose this box you're getting a set of those before anybody else you're also going to get I thought these were just kind of fun and and at first I was like do I really need these but if you've got bags of clay and you're constantly doing that twist tie on there and then the twist ties break and you've got to find something else to put on there, these are, they're strings with these little things that you pinch and slide, kind of like a lot of coats and stuff have these on, gloves and things have these. Um, these are tie-offs for bags of clay. And so they come in two different colors, green and orange. And um, we just started carrying these. These will get added to the website. We just got those in. And then this is like kind of the coolest thing. This is a ruler. It's a flexible ruler um, that Zen Tools has. And I'm going to open this one up and I'll pull this pull this out. Um, okay. So this is this really cool flexible ruler. Look at this. It's like a snake that you can take. And so if you need to measure something, and not only with ceramics but I can bend this and I can wrap it around something if I if for some strange reason I needed to know what um, this uh, this can measured I can just take and wrap that around and measure that oh my gosh it's exactly eight inches around on that piece and so like if you're making lids for pieces or you're trying to make mugs that are the same diameter and you're building with slabs or you need to measure anything this is this flexible ruler that and it stays put so it's not it's flexible but it doesn't flop around it's it's almost like it's got metal or something in the inside that you can twist and turn this any way that you want and it's got on one side it's got centimeters and on the other side it has inches and this one they, it comes in different lengths I went with the the longest length that they have the 24 inch one so that is something too that we just got these in we'll be adding these to the website and then there's this cool this is a new Kemper tool that we've added this is a new um, texture tool that I'll be using in some upcoming projects as well so Michelle um, is going to be getting this whole box of different stuff oh and I just set 
this into the wet frosting on the cookie. So I'm going to wipe that off before I put it back in here and get it on everything. All right. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit um, before we go about um, what's kind of coming up. So normally this time of year, we started this last year, um, where we did kind of an auction style um, type thing last year where we had overstock items, we had finished samples we didn't need anymore, we had bisque, we had all kinds of stuff that um, that we did and, and, and I would just show it and say okay I've got three of these, the first three people to put their name in can get these items and that was a little bit of a nightmare last year because Janine was like frantically going crazy trying to keep up with and and then we had that issue where sometimes somebody would comment and it wouldn't show up and then we told three other people okay you've got those um, so what we're going to do this year that will be different is I'm going to um, I thought about doing a live like that and then making the website go live right at the end of it but then I run into I've had a lot of people talk to me about you know if I do it in the evening they work and they can't sometimes see it until the next day or if I do it in the morning or on a Saturday there's always conflicts with it so to try and make it fair for everybody what I'm going to do is I'm going to go live um, probably every day every other day next week and it's going to be quick lives and I'm going to say you know here's some items and they will be live on the website and as soon as I'm done with that live those items will go live and they will be available and once they're sold out on the website they're sold out um, and to, to make it fair I'm going to try to do several of those and so sometimes it might be in the morning sometimes it might be in the afternoon sometimes it might be in the evening I'll try to kind of to put something up on Facebook that says you know today I'll go live around you know 9 a.m. I'll go live around noon and I'll go live around 7 p.m. or something like that central time um, and then we'll make those items go live so it'll kind of split it up so everybody kind of gets an opportunity to get some of those items so I hope that will work better this year um, and I just want to show you guys a couple new things that uh, I'm working on for after the first of the year one of the the lives that I'm kind of planning is doing the clay snowmen using the sphere shapes a lot of you have the sphere shapes and then we've got this is a new paste and I don't know if this will show up real well and kind of tip it on site it is a dimensional paste it comes in all different colors works great with stencils and this one is the wheat stencil and it's hard to get the the dimension there it's kind of showing up here um, it's really dimensional and it works great with the stencils um, I've been playing around with this is one of the the samples of the the paste um, it's it's creamy like butter it goes on really well with the stencil so I've been playing around with that and this was a piece I wanted to see how it held up on a glazed surface um, and I've been playing around on polished under glazes and some different stuff with these I also took this copper on Raku pieces and rub this on areas of the Raku pieces and it adds a lot of metallic and there's purple and there's blue and there's all different colors so I'm just starting to play around with that that'll be something that we'll probably show after the first of the year as well and who knows what else I'll be coming up with I know we've got some new cone shapes coming out some bigger cone shapes like I said I've got some ideas with the the heart cookie cutouts and stuff that we might be doing with some of those new shapes so I don't know if you've got any other questions that have come up, Janine. Oh, how will you do shipping if you can only get one piece that's less than $50? Oh, that's a good question. So if you see something that you want oh, yeah. that's that's like one of the lives that I show, and then you go into the website and you buy it, um, you will have the ability, yeah, so if you don't do $50, you won't get free shipping on that first order. Um, if you find items after that you want to add to an order um, you'll be able to use the, the coupon code FS100 which if you have an order in that qualifies for free shipping and you find other items during the lives that you want to add to it so I'll do it for about a week and then at the end of the week we'll pack everything up and ship it so if you find items later that you want you'll be able to use the coupon code FS100 and that will take off the shipping charges um, if you want to use that code say on Monday you see a $20 item that you want to get 
and you use the, the coupon code FS100, it will take off the shipping, but you're only up to $20. Throughout that week, you would need to add another $30 to it, and every time you do an order, do the coupon code FS100, and if at the end of the week, I look at your orders, and for some reason you're not up to $50, you would need to um, find something else on the website to order that would get your, your total up to it. I mean, I've got everything from $1 items up to, you know, hundreds of dollar items. So I think, you know, some, you can buy a few bottles of paint or whatever to get up to that $50. So that's how we'll work that. And I'll, I'll put that out there during each of the lives that you can use that FS100 um, to, to get your total during the week up to $50 to get the free shipping. And that would be in the US 48. Or if all of your items fit into a uh, flat rate shipping box, up to a large flat rate shipping box, we will ship it for free as well. But we'll have all different types of stuff next week that, that I'll be doing throughout the week, several times a day usually. And Janine won't be here for part of that, so she'll be gone to Texas. <laughs> all right, any other questions? All right, if not, thanks to you guys for, for joining us. Um, I will see you guys next week when we do some some lives. And um, if I don't see you before the holidays, happy holidays to everybody. Stay safe, take care, and we'll see you after the first of the year. Thanks for all your support this year, and we'll keep coming up with new things to show you after the first of the year. Take care. <laughs>